and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today we're going to start off by creating um, a little bit of a background panel. So my cardstock has been cut to the size of an ATC. Um, uh, so basically an artist trading card is about two and a half by three and a half. And you can see here some of my mousses are a little a little bit dried out, but um, that's okay because most of the time you can actually bring them back to life by spritzing some uh, distilled water. And I, I actually just like to flake it off um, whatever I plan to use and then um, add my distilled water there instead of trying to reactivate the entire pot at the same time. Then I, uh, as you saw, just smushed my cardstock right into that mixture. I did mix two different colors just to get the shade of blue that I wanted. This is glimmer paste that, so as you can see, I, I did add some water to this. And the reason why it's gone kind of milky is because glimmer paste essentially is just glitter, a lot of glitter, um, jam packed into adhesive or a liquid adhesive. And, so that's why it turned that milky white, but when it dries, that adhesive is going to dry clear. So you're just going to see the glitter. And I use that to just um, do some uh, splashes right on top. I have this stencil called uh, Snowy Evergreen from TLC Designs. And this is actually some um, crackle mousse in two different colors. I wanted to... I wanted it to be very tone on tone. So there's a little bit of um, a shade of blue in there mixed in with the Russian white. So the Russian white will lighten it up a little and they're both crackle mousses. So, um, so you'll still see that. And whatever is left over, I'm just trying to use. So whatever was left over from my first um, ink smushing, I just smushed onto this panel and same uh, for the crackle mousse. I just stenciled more snowflakes onto uh, that scrap panel. My card today is going to be a center stepper and I designed this to showcase a landscape oriented ATC card. So this is another video by request from a viewer and so hopefully you'll find um, this design helpful. It's um, very similar. I won't go through exactly step by step how to make the center stepper, but I'll link to a video um, where you can actually see how to customize all of this. Essentially, I start off with a um, card base that's 120 pound cover weight that is cut to eight and a half by five and a half. And I measured one inch in from the left and right edge. And I just drew myself a pencil line because I'm ultimately going to cut my cardstock on that one inch line. Um, and as well, I'm going to be scoring some lines right up until that line. And you can see all of my um, score marks uh, in dashed lines there. So I've scored at one, two, three and a half. Uh, I'll return to the four and a half in a moment. Three and three or four and three quarters and six and a half. So all of those score lines go from the edge to that one inch mark that I drew. And the four at the four and a quarter mark, you want to score that in between your two one inch uh, lines. So now I've got um, my base all done. I have this panel here, which I've cut out of some gorgeous pattern paper, also from TLC Designs. It's from the Snow Family Fun um, Slimline Designer Paper Pack. And I cut this to, um, the starting panel was four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I just took out a three and a quarter inch tall by one inch wide rectangle from the top of both sides. So that gives me a panel um, that fully covers the front of my center stepper without any of the card base showing. 
This is um, two strips of one and a quarter inch wide by uh, eight and a half. And again, this is from the same paper pad. So everything coordinates really beautifully. And all I've done is just glue the ends together to continue this sort of accordion fold. To do the accordion fold, I scored at every single quarter of an inch. And then when I went to fold it, I alternated mountain and valley fold. So kind of a fan fold, accordion fold. Um, basically, you just want to alternate your folds. And to um, complete what will ultimately be a rosette, I am going to punch out a three quarters of an inch disc as you see here. Now this first piece here, I used my Beacon 3-in-1 glue because it's, it's a nice thick glue gel. And I thought that might be perfect for um, sort of seeping into all of those crevices because our rosette has all of those uh, mountains and valleys. But of course, there's a lot of tension. And so um, because that glue gel does take a while to set, you'll want to secure that down. So I secured it both with some um, transparent tape and as well, I put my ergonomic bone folder right on top of that to, to give it some weight and that will hold it down. Later, I'll use some uh, a hot glue gun and that that will be a lot quicker because once that hot glue gun has a chance to cool off, it's which takes maybe 10 seconds or so. Um, you know, that's that's all you have to wait for um, for that to completely set and and to hold its sh its uh, shape. So I found another piece of this is just a bit of scrap left over from another card making session, but it. Come, came from the same paper pad, so it coordinates beautifully. And there's a touch of the brown in the tree trunks, and so that sort of picks up on um, the the main pattern paper that, that I've used here. So everything sort of um, goes together really nicely, even though this isn't really strictly meant to be holiday but I um, will be using a stamp set that is a little bit suggestive of winter. So I thought these evergreen trees would be perfect for that. Now, one of the things um, to bear in mind is that when you make your rosette, um, and I'm just going to attach the top piece here. I did punch out my three quarter disc out of that same brown pattern paper because I wasn't sure if this would be visible or not. So in the event that it's visible, I definitely wanted it to still look pretty and coordinate with our um, our card. But what I was saying with the rosette is that recall I mentioned that I cut my strips to one and a quarter inch wide. The width of your strip will essentially be the radius of your rosette. So if you want a larger rosette, then you can cut a wider strip. So whatever diameter you want your final rosette to be, divide that by two, and that's how wide you need to cut your strip. Granted, there's going to be a little bit, um, it'll end up being a little bit larger just because your the ends of your paper in the center aren't going to meet up with each other, but that should give you a rough idea. Now I'm using a um, white gelato of mine, and... The reason why I wanted to add some of that gelato to my background is because I want my robots here, which actually come from a super cute stamp set from TLC Designs. It's called Snowbot Friends. And especially the one that I colored up in teal, he's a little, he gets a little bit lost in the background. So I thought it would help to just lighten the background behind my two robots a uh, smidge so that they stand out a little bit better. And that's the reason why I'm adding a little bit of foam adhesive to the back of them as well. So that's also going to help them to, um, that extra dimension will create a little bit of a shadow, which will also help to um, make them stand 
out against the background. And these robots were a ton of fun to color up. I used my color pencils and I actually have a metallic silver color pencil and it was fun to try that out. I don't really see much of a metallic sheen, but it was still fun to, to try to go for that metal effect. And um, I had a lot of fun just trying to get these um, cute guys to coordinate with the pattern papers that I chose as well. Here's that uh, Snowbot Friends stamp set that I mentioned where these robots are from. There's also a snowman in the set, a really fun festive hat, and a few other little individual stamp sets like there's two birds and um, a set or a little uh, mound of snowballs. In addition, there are also a few sentiments and they're not strictly Christmas or holiday sentiments, so I think they're great for any kind of winter uh, celebration. So for example, the one that I chose, it's programmed for festivities, so that could be anything um, all year round, really, but if you're using them with these robots, they they are all bundled up in scarves, and, um, and so... Um, they're more suited for winter time, but if you have other robot die sets or stamp sets, these uh, sentiments would be really great for that. So here, all that's left is for me to figure out how I want to showcase everything. So I want everything to, to show, including my rosette. So um, in retrospect, I do feel like the rosette could have been larger. That way it actually um, is wider than my ATC. But I think in the end, I still, I found a composition that still um, allows you to kind of appreciate the rosette design. But the reality is I probably could have just done half of a rosette because I do cover up the other half of it. Also keep in mind, um, when you're making a rosette, the distance that you score, so remember I scored every quarter of an inch, that distance is going to govern the thickness of your rosette. So this is actually a quarter of an inch thick, just the rosette by itself. And then I'm layering on top of that additional cardstock, additional foam. This will not be an easy mailer. So expect to have to pay extra postage if you do end up popping um, a card design like this in the mail. You'll want to... Um, either take it to the post office and, and have them, um, you know, weigh it and everything. Um, but it's not really the weight that's going to, to get you the extra shipping. It's, it's really the, the thickness because I think for a standard stamp, it, it needs to actually be under a quarter of an inch and this will definitely be over. So just keep that in mind. Um, or if this is going to be the kind of card that you hand out in person, then, um, then you don't have to worry about that at all. So the last thing I need to do is pop my sentiment on and, I um, didn't really plan this out very well because I put foam everywhere, but parts of this is going to go over the rosette, parts will go over the robot, which already has a little bit of foam. So I had to squeeze on a little bit of my um, Kalau 3D glue gel so that I could make this level, especially on that bottom portion where it, it overlaps with the rosette. And again, because the rosette has all of those mountains and valleys, um, the glue gel is going to be great because it'll get into all of those crevices. So there's a close-up look of my um, center stepper card. Love the background. It was super, super easy, fun technique, but it definitely looks very artsy and um, I think anyone would be impressed by it. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get a notification anytime I post new videos to my channel. Thanks again. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.